Hello Year 5s and welcome to today's art lesson. Today we're focusing on Quentin Blake. You've been listening to a story that Mr Greenhouse has been reading called James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. And most of Roald Dahl's books were illustrated by Quentin ba Blake. The one Mr Greenhouse reading isn't, so I thought today would be a good chance to get to know Quentin Blake and perhaps draw some pictures for Mr Greenhouse's story. Let's start off with an interview from Quentin Blake from a few years ago. You sit down at the page with a pencil and you start drawing. You start round the face somewhere, I don't know, I think, and you sort of find out who those people are as you're drawing them. You don't look at somebody climbing a ladder to see what it's like. You kind of imagine what that must be like. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so you 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 feel the, the gestures on yourself in a funny sort of way. And also you 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 make the expressions of the people looking at each other in the pictures. You don't make the expressions into a mirror, do you? To no, 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 no. You you make them from inside. <laughs> Quentin Blake is the man who drew childhood. His illustrations have seen several generations of youngsters through their formative years. His work kind of means children's books somehow. And so even if you haven't really studied it or you you don't really take notice of, of who illustrators are, you, you do know his work, it's, it's everywhere and it's been copied so many times by so many different people that it's now just part of the culture. He's probably best known for his collaboration with the dark genius Roald Dahl. They were the good cop, bad cop of the children's section. We were very opposite in many ways, I mean we liked humour and we liked exaggeration and you know I mean so there was a whole area where we obviously corresponded where the books were happening I think probably a lot of our views about life would be completely opposite and uh, he would be much more sort of confrontational than, than, than I would at the same time I, mean, I remember somebody saying when I was small you know I thought the words and the pictures were by the same person well I can see you know. why that would be the case and actually the the memory of the books would be of your illustrations, perhaps at least as much as his words, if not more so. Well, they, they, he, he was very generous about that and said, you know, when people talk about the BFG, what they see is what Quint really, you know, kind of Quint. <laughs> but, but you try and play the notes accurately, if you see what I mean. The first children's book I wrote was called The Boy in the Dress, and I met up with Quentin and he showed me the design he had for the cover. And I actually cried because it was so perfect, and I couldn't believe that a character I'd created, he'd actually illustrated. He illustrated so many of the books that I loved growing up. And I think the magic to his work is that it doesn't tell you exactly what the person looks like. It allows you to add your imagination to it. I'm sure you recognised a fair few of the pictures in there from some of Roald Dahl's books as well as from David Walliam's books. As David Walliam was saying, you can really get to know the character through how Quentin Blake drew them. They're very rough drawings, very interesting drawings. Next up we've got a video on how to draw like Quentin Blake. So when you're going to do your drawing, have a think about how to bring it alive and how to make it look like one of Quentin Blake's drawings. Hello Arcadets, welcome to my channel where learning art is fun. I'm Sarah and today I'm going to show you how to draw like Quentin Blake using a dip pen for World Book Day on the 1st of March. So if you don't know who Quentin Blake is, you'll probably recognise his illustrations because he illustrated all but one of Roald Dahl's books, like the ones I'm showing you here, as well as Mr Stink by David Williams and many more besides. So I really love Quentin Blake's drawings and thought it would be really fun to have a go at drawing some of these popular book characters myself and giving you a few tips on the things I learned along the way. 
So the characters I'll be drawing today are firstly the enormous crocodile, then the BFG, and finally fantastic Mr. Fox. Before we begin though, let's look at the materials our illustrator uses for his drawings, since the materials we use can influence how our finished drawing looks. So Quentin Blake rather unusually used a dip pen, which looks a bit like a fountain pen, but don't worry if you haven't got one of these, a black fine liner will work just fine. And don't worry if you don't have one of those either, whatever you've got to use, have a go. A pen would probably be easier to make the same effect as Quentin Blake, but if it's only a pencil you've got, it'll be fine. If you are using a dip pen though, you will need some ink, and today I'm going to be using the Winsor & Newton Black Indian Ink, since it's waterproof and permanent like the ink Blake uses, as he tended to colour his illustrations with watercolour paints. You'll also need some paper, and I'm going to be using watercolour paper, but any paper will do for practising drawing. So let's get on with it. So before I put pencil to paper, I'm just going to spend a few minutes looking at this reference drawing to see what I can learn about Quentin Blake's style before I begin. Observation is key when looking at other people's art styles. The first thing I notice is that quite a lot of the lines aren't smooth, they're jagged. Even the lines drawn for his arms aren't perfectly straight or smooth. The BFG also has a pointy nose, like a lot of Blake's characters, so these are things we'll need to remember in our own BFG drawing. His feet are also quite pointy and his eye is just a small dot, again like a lot but not all of his characters. I'm going to start my drawing at the top of the page and again this is something that Quentin Blake does too. I'm also going to rough out my sketch in pencil first before adding ink later on. So we can begin with a pointy nose and rather flat forehead before moving on to his very big ear. And there's no smooth lines around here either. So it's just a dot for his eye and a simple line for his mouth. And then I'm ready to move on to his arms and upper body. And remember how we noticed that his arms weren't particularly smooth. And believe it or not, it's actually quite hard to draw jagged what your eye sees as smooth. So now onto his shirt and waistcoat, which were a bit more tricky, but the thing that I liked about these illustrations is that despite the jagged lines, all of Blake's characters have bags of personality and the drawings have a sense of spontaneity about them, which makes them more interesting as a result. Let me know in the comments box what you think about his drawing style and the illustrations that you've seen of his. It's also interesting to learn that whilst we're talking about these drawing lines as jagged, scruffy or rough, Blake was incredibly meticulous about his drawings, often redoing them many times to get them just right. So moving on to the BFG's trousers, again we have to remember to make sure that our lines aren't just straight all the way down. So add in some interesting lumps and bumps to try and capture some of Blake's style. I don't know about you, but I tend to draw everything straight and smooth. So for me this style is really fun and exciting. And now drawing anything smooth and straight afterwards is going to seem just rather dull. So now it's time to outline with the dip pen and ink. And I was keen to see how this would work on my bumpy watercolour paper. And I would suggest that if you're going to try out some of this at home, to try it out on some scrap paper first. So with a dip pen, the line you make depends on the size of the nib, which you can vary, but also on the amount of pressure you apply to it. So more pressure means more ink will flow, and the thicker your line will be. Less pressure then means less ink will flow, and the result will be a much thinner, finer line. So the nib I used was very small, so it was a bit scratchy on this watercolour paper, but I did get the hang of it in the end. I was quite happy with how it turned out for my first try too. So let me know in the comments box if you've ever used a dip pen, what your experience has been, and whether or not it's something that you would recommend or use again for illustration, or would you just stick to it for calligraphy and fancy writing? The good thing about using it on this bumpy cold press watercolour paper was that it was quite difficult to get a smooth line anyway. 
so naturally the nib of the dip pen did tend to make straight lines rather than curved ones. So that was kind of an added bonus. So moving on to Fantastic Mr Fox, and for Mr Fox I repeated the same method as for the BFG, observing to start with the main character differences, and the first major difference I noticed were the eyes, so that's something to make sure we draw right on our illustration, they're not just dots this time. Another thing I noticed was that the paws were quite thin and pointy, and pointy hands and fingers are another thing to look out for in some of Blake's other famous characters. So go and look out some of the pictures of Matilda or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, for example, and you'll see what I mean. So normally drawing hands can be very difficult, so I felt this style of drawing very refreshing, and a lot easier to do. And for the most part when I'm trying to draw realistic hands, they end up looking a bit thin and pointy anyway, so it worked for me. What I did find exciting and fun as well was noticing the amount of feeling, expression and personality that Blake manages to get across to us in his seemingly simple drawings. They always end up making me want to look really carefully at them rather than just skimming through quickly. So let me know which is your favourite Quentin Blake character and what would you be drawing for World Book Day if you were going to draw your favourite book character. So the thing I did like about the dip pen was that it gave more variety of line width to my drawing but if you like to have a more consistent line width then perhaps stick with your fine liner. But then I think this is one of those things that you have to practice and get used to before you feel completely comfortable with it and how it works. So something that I'm not going to be doing today but will be doing on the video on Friday is to finish off by colouring these in in watercolour. So the main point of today's video was to look at the different styles and to see if we could recreate it. So the last character I'm looking at is the enormous crocodile because this may be a character more popular for younger viewers and I thought, to be honest, a crocodile would be too tricky to draw, but actually I really enjoyed this one, and it was definitely the easiest of the three today. And I think it was made easier because the teeth weren't exactly straight all the way along, and that just gave you a little bit of freedom to make it up yourself. So once we'd outlined all our characters in black and the ink had dried, the last thing to do was to rub out the pencil lines underneath. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learnt some things about Quentin Blake and his style of drawing. If you did, don't forget to give this video a like, comment and subscribe to my channel and join me on Friday when we're going to be painting another character from Quentin Blake. Thank you for watching. Bye! That video was from Art Cadets, obviously part of um, World Book Day a couple of years ago, but the video is just as important to show us how to draw like Quentin Blake. If you do want to subscribe to um, her website, there is, or sorry, YouTube channel, there are lots of other drawings to have a go at too. But today's task, practice drawing like Quentin Blake. Choose a part of James and the Giant Peach. If you've not been listening along, go to Mr Greenhouse um, YouTube channel, that's Mr. Greenhow's distance learning channel. Read or watch some of his um, reading of James and the Giant Peach. You can choose a funny scene, a dramatic scene, anything you like. It could just be a character and have a go at drawing, sketching in the style of Quentin Blake. So choose a part, sketch the scene in style of Quentin Blake, then upload your pictures of your drawings onto Class Dojo, where Mr. Greenhow and I will be keeping an eye out. Have a great afternoon. Bye.